Good morning, church, and I want to wish everybody a very happy Mother's Day. This is a great day to celebrate and to honor our mothers, and I honestly believe that Mother's Day is one of the most important days on a church's calendar, and over the past few years, we have made a lovely and delicious breakfast for not only our moms, but actually our entire congregation. I miss that today. I wish I could have been there at your house to cook you breakfast and, and uh, serve all the moms and grandmoms and the family breakfast today. But I want to honor every mom who's listening today. And uh, first of all, I want to honor my own mother today. She was a wonderful mother, and uh, the scraps books that she made are absolutely proof that she was because they're a visual and photographic history of the love my mom had for her family. And I also want to honor my mother-in-law today, Jereen's mom. I've been in the family 44 years, and and uh, she treats me like a son, and I treat her like a mom and even call her mom. And I especially today want to honor my wife, Jereen. God has so blessed our family with this wonderful wife and mother. She homeschooled our kids while we were missionaries. She uh, is in constant contact with our kids, and and uh, they love her, and so do I. And then I also want to honor my daughter-in-law, especially Irma, who's doing a wonderful job in raising Nico. But I think it's a, a very important day to celebrate our moms. And I know that we're se se separated physically. That's going to end very soon. But if there's ever been a, a year when we need to honor our moms, I, I think it's this year. This has been a crazy year for moms. Just think about it for a moment. This year, mothers have taken on the role of homeschool teacher, or at least tutor during this corona virus pandemic. And then there are parents who don't can't take their kids out on the regular outings and events, and and so they've kind of been stuck at home. It's been parenting 24/7. And this year, there's a lot of grandmothers that are missing grandchildren because the grandkids can't come over to see them because, you know, for fear that, you know, they might infect, someone might be infected with this virus. And and uh, there's probably some grandmothers today in nursing homes who feel a little bit abandoned because their family can't come and see them. And, and so this year, the moms have had a lot of extra put on them. Travel has kind of slowed down to a near halt. But I tell you, I'm grateful today for Modern devices such as Skype and FaceTime and cell phones and Zooms and even how about those old school landlines that we can call our parents and mothers uh, on and honor them. Uh, but of all years where moms need to be honored, I believe that this is one of them. And, and I also know that for some, Mother's Day can be kind of painful. Uh, I know that I lost my own mother just about four years ago. Uh, now and, and it's still painful to think of that and, and we miss her and uh, we miss her dearly and there's other moms who maybe you know didn't have children other ladies who didn't have children or where everything just isn't right with your children and you or uh, whatever the situation that you find yourself in today I want to tell every mother and every woman listen God loves you you are loved by us you are loved by the Lord today but uh, moms are important because as children, we learn from our parents, and no one has more impact than mothers because usually they're in such close proximity with the children. And so we learn how to react to things. We learn how to behave primarily through observing our parents and our guardians. And sometimes the degree of honor that we express toward our parents as we get older is based on some of those experiences. And so if our, if our parents were attentive and loving and encouraging, we kind of feel like, hey, they really deserve honor. But if we have the idea, and, and you know, hey, it may be the absolute truth that your parents were unattentive or maybe they were disengaged, preoccupied, or too permissive or too strict, or maybe they even had addictions and a lot of problems or divorce separated you or something happened. And and today, you feel like on Mother's Day that your parents don't deserve honor. I want you to take a moment this morning 
and, and kind of rethink that. Because according to Isaiah chapter 55 and verse number 8, this is what God says. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. And, and what I have discovered is that God's main desire for us as believers is that we would grow to be successful individuals that would also have an excellent character. And one part of that excellent character that God wants is how we treat our parents. And this matters so much to God that he gives us a specific commandment, and it's the only commandment, well, it's one of those commandments that has a promise with it. It doesn't say honor your mother if they deserve it, honor your parents if they deserve it, it tells us simply to honor them. I want to read to you today out of the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. The scripture says this. It says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and you may live long on the earth. So honoring your father and mother comes with the promise. And that promise is twofold. God says that it may be well with you. I honestly believe that there's a peace that comes when you learn how to live and honor your parents. And I believe that God blesses people who honor their parents. Uh, it's not a, really a promise of a, of a problem-free life. No such promise is ever given. But it is a promise that things will, for the most part, be well with you. And then, secondly, God goes on to say, I will actually extend your life. He says, honor your mother and father that you may live long on the earth. Wow. Uh, someone said kind of in a joking uh, way one time, why, of course they're going to live a long time on the earth, because if I'd have said certain things to my mom or acted a certain way, she would have killed me, right? Of course, you know, they said that jokingly, but, but seriously today, God promises a longer life if you honor your father and your mother. And beyond that, by obeying God and honoring our parents, we really can achieve a level of moral value that can inspire the world. And, and, and by the way, Mother's Day has become a really huge day. Did you know that more phone calls are made on Mother's Day than any other day of the year? These holiday chats with mom often cause phone traffic to spike as much as 37%. And Mother's Day is a holiday people spend money on, okay? Second in the calendar only to that big uh, holiday of Christmas. And so obviously people love their mothers. And so this morning I want to give you today really quickly eight different ways to honor your mother. This is powerful stuff, so I want you to get a pen or a pencil and paper and, 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 and write this down today. Eight ways to honor your mother. First of all, number one, love her unconditionally. The way to honor your mother is to love her unconditionally. Love her when she's young. Love her when she's old. Love her when she has to so much to give and she keeps on giving and giving and giving to you. Love her when she's giving you the very best years of her life. When she lays her life down for you and then love her when she has nothing left to give. You are commanded by the word of God to love her unconditionally. And then some of the most giving individuals in the world, in the universe, are moms. Most mothers love their children unconditionally. Now, that doesn't mean that they won't correct them or challenge them, but most moms will lay down their lives for their kids. It doesn't matter what they do or don't do. Moms will love and, 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 and unconditionally. And I believe that we need to return that love back. So whether she has nothing to give or whether she has a lot to give, listen, express your love to your mom. Tell her that you love her. And, and, and I tell you, I would give almost anything to have just 15 minutes with my mom again to tell her how much I love her. Moms are very, very special. One of her columns, Irma Bombeck, 
tells of God in the act of creating mothers. And by the way, this is not scripturally based. This is, I guess, a secular uh, writer in her column, Irma Bombeck. This is what she wrote. She says that on the day God created mothers, he had already worked a long, worked long overtime. And and an angel said to him, Lord, you sure are spending a lot of time on this one. And the Lord turned and said, have you read the specs on this model? She's supposed to be completely washable, but not plastic. She's got to have 180 moving parts. She's to have a kiss that will heal everything from a broken leg to a broken heart. She's able to function on just black coffee and leftovers, and she's supposed to have six pairs of hands. Six pairs of hands, said the angel. That's impossible. It's not the six pairs of hands that bother me, said the Lord. It's the three pairs of eyes. She's supposed to have one pair that sees through closed doors so that whenever she says, what are you kids doing in there? She already knows what they're doing in there. She has another pair in the back of her head to see all the things she's not supposed to see but must see. And then she has one pair right in the front that can look at a child that just goofed and communicate love and understanding without saying a a word. That's too much, said the angel. You can't put that much in one model. Why don't you rest a while and resume your creating tomorrow? No, I can't, said the Lord. I'm close to creating someone very much like myself. I've already come up with the model who can heal herself when she's sick, who can feed a family of six with one pound of hamburger, and who can persuade a nine-year-old to take a shower. The angel reached over and touched her cheek. This one has a leak, he said. I told you that you couldn't put that much in one model. That's not a leak, said the Lord. That's a tear. Well, what's a tear for, asked the angel. Well, it's for joy, for sadness, for sorrow, for disappointment, for pride. Because this model is going to love much. You're a genius, said the angel. How many of you know that our moms have loved us unconditionally? and We've got to love them back. And not just by saying it, but by showing it. First John 3, 18 says this, My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. We've got to love her unconditionally. And then secondly, we've got to hug her affectionately. Now there's a bumper sticker that you see in cars that says, Have you hugged your kid today? You know, I think we ought to make one and put it on teenagers' doors that say, have you hugged your mom today? You know, it's amazing how we can take for granted the love our mothers have for us. We're to hug her affectionately because they need it. Now, we live in different times today than when I was coming up. And there were certain things that you did not say to your mother or a certain way that you did not speak to her. And if you didn't say something right in those days, there were very grave consequences. You just didn't get up and tell your mother any old thing. And I, I can remember when I was just a teen in high school, I said something sarcastic to my mother and she grabbed this dishcloth. And by the way, I don't know if you've ever known the smell of a dishcloth that's been sitting too long and it's kind of sour and nasty smelling. And she cracked me across the face with it. Hey, I deserved it okay. Now, I'm not recommending that you do this, okay? But I can tell you that it had a great effect on me. I remember the taste of that washcloth, okay? That was the one thing that my father never allowed in our house, and that was to talk back or treat our mother with disrespect. He taught us that mothers are special, that they should be loved, and that taught me to respect our mother, and I've never forgot that so we've got to hug them un- hug them affectionately. So if you're near your mother today watching this, just go and give them a hug, all right? And when I think of all the hugs and comforts that moms have given, it's incredible, right? 
It takes a lot of hugs to be able to raise a child. It takes a lot of, of hugs to be able to give that child that sense of security and, and knowing that they're going to be okay. And so I think moms have a fervent kind of love. Peter talked about that in 1 Peter 1, 22. He said, love one another fervently with a pure heart. If that doesn't express a mom's love, I can't imagine anything that does. And so as far as mothers are concerned, we need to hug them affectionately and fervently because they have loved us with a pure heart. And then not only must we love her unconditionally and hug her affectionately, but number three, we need to understand her sympathetically. You see, mothers go through a lot of changes across years. Beginning from the diapers, through the preschool, through the high school, through the college, all the way on until they're seeing their great-grandchildren, right? They wear so many hats. They cook, they clean, they judge, they make peace, they referee, they tutor, they are sounding boards, they're accountants, they're marriage counselors. They do so much, and we need to appreciate the great job they do for us every day of their lives, and we need to understand them sympathetically for all that they are going through. We need to have something in our heart that shows an overwhelming sense of gratitude for them. We can't just treat them ugly after they've grown older and we have gotten so much from them. We have to listen to them and understand them and, and, and know what they're going through. And understanding them is really a way that we can honor them, understand what they're going through as they go through all of those different seasons of life that seem to go by so quickly. And then number four, we're to listen to her attentively. Now, we know that husbands want undivided attention, right? Children, when there is something wrong, want undivided attention from that mother, and I've always loved the story in 2 Kings chapter 4 about that kid who comes to his dad out in the field and, you know, he's holding his head and then he's saying, my head, my head. And, and some people think that he might have had a sunstroke or something. And, and so they bring him to the dad. And what does the dad do? He says, go take him to his mother. You know, I've always kind of thought that was humorous. But it really brings out an important truth because when there's a problem, who do people want? People want mom. Why? It's because she is most likely to listen to us attentively. What do you uh, in your household do when, when there's trouble in the house? You want to go and find your mother and, and tell her. You want to tell mother. I mean, don't tell him. Don't tell daddy. You know, somebody could be bleeding all over and dad's just watching the basketball game and he'll look up and say, go put a Band-Aid on it. You'll be okay. But mother's different, right? They're so attentive and they pay attention to every detail. And, and in return, we're to listen to her attentively. Uh, so somebody wisely said this, said this. They said, when you're old enough to know the answer, Nobody is asking you the questions. And the truth is this, that the older people get, the, wider, the wiser people get. You know, there's sometimes some little 20-somethings that have, you know, one little baby and, and that they parent and, and uh, you know, they, 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 they don't honor their parent who's already raised four or five. And, you know, these 20-somethings, they just think they know everything and understand everything. And, and they may even think, man, I can't even take little, my little one over there, you know, because I, I don't, you know, I'm not sure he'll be safe over there. But please, let me tell you something today. Listen to your mother. Listen to your father. They know what they're talking about. And if you really want some wisdom, talk to grandma, okay? You'll be surprised what she knows. And here's the point today. Even if you don't always agree with them, make them feel valuable by listening to them. Because what they have to say is important. And they listen to you all of your life from the time that you were a baby until now. They listen to your greatest challenges and your greatest problems. And so now it's time for you to listen to them attentively. And then number five, 
Help her cheerfully. My mother, just about every time I would go and visit her up where uh, she lived up in Waco, she would have a little project for me. She would tell me how long that it would take and, and, and what she had in mind and then tell me what I needed to do. And, and it was always something that she couldn't do by herself. And I always felt that it was very important to help her to get that done. And I, I, I did those things cheerfully because, you know, mothers are the greatest helpers in the world. They do things that you can't even pay people to do. I mean, they pay got things out of the bathroom floor that no one else would even come near. And they clean up some of the messes that smell. Oh, well, anyway, you moms know what I'm talking about, right? But, 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 but don't make your mom feel like she's a burden or that you're doing them some big favor by helping them out when she asks a favor of you. Help her cheerfully. How many of you know that you can tell if somebody wants to be around you, right? You can tell if someone wants to help you out or not. And so we need to help them cheerfully. Don't act like it's a, you're doing them a, a big favor because you're giving them some money or, or like it's a big deal when you get up and help with the dishes at mom's house. It's not a big deal. It's what ought to be done. And, and, and it's actually an honor to do a chore around the house that they can't do. I mean, after all, they took care of you all your life, and this is how we honor them, by doing things cheerfully for them. Number six, we need to remember her gratefully. How many of you know your mom is not going to forget you? I love the verse that says, Isaiah 49 and 15 the scripture says, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child that she has born? Now, the scripture goes on to say, well, she, you know, she might forget, but you know, something is very doubtful that she would, right? Our mothers remember us. They remember all the stories about us, and they tell those stories sometimes at the most inconvenient times. But we need to remember our mother with gratitude. And this is not something that we do just one day. We need to do this all year long. And how many of you know that little things can mean a lot to mom and grandmother? A, a call that says, hey, what are you doing? What's happening? How are you feeling? Do you have everything you need? Or, or, or a, a calling in to say, hey, we're going to go shopping. Do you want to go shopping with us? We have a ball game. Do you want to go? Or the kids have a choir concert on, on Tuesday, and, and, and we want you to come, and we'll go out to eat afterwards. Just remember her with a grateful heart for all that she has done. Just a simple call that says, I'm thinking of you and I remember you and you're important in my life. You're important enough for me to reach out to and, and you've given so much to me and I appreciate you. You see, every mom in the world wants to feel appreciated. I mean, she gave you the very best years of her life and, and, and the way that you remember her is by gratefully remembering her and giving her those gestures of remembrance. And as you do this, you gratefully remember how well she taught you, how much she sacrificed, how well she trained you, how much she loved you. And it's just a call, just an invite, just a friendly gesture. That's the way that we need to honor our mothers. And then number seven, we need to remind her of how much she's needed. You see, it hurts a mom to feel like that she's no longer needed. There's nothing more difficult for a mom as she gets into those golden years and, you know, maybe her husband has passed away and now she's alone. And, and so what happens is that the enemy comes along and whispers in her ear, you know, your life is over. You're not really necessary. You're not important. You're just a hindrance. You're an inconvenience to everyone. How many of you know that is an absolute lie? Our parents have great value to us, and we have to constantly remind our parents how much they are needed and loved. And when she can't work, let me tell you, she's still needed because she can pray. And it thrills her when you call 
to ask her for the recipe. And we know it's probably not going to taste, you know, like when she made it, right? Because, you know, she didn't really have a recipe. She just tossing stuff in there and tasting it and adding a little here and a little there. But let me tell you, it is incredible how important that is to her that you thought enough of her that you would go ahead and call her on the phone and ask her. And the older they get, the more we need to show them and tell them how much we love them. What mothers need the most is to be honored and loved. And so remind her of how much she is needed. And then lastly, number eight, we need to be thankful for her prayers. Of all the things my mother's done for me, and it's a long, long list. I'm most thankful for the prayers of my mother. She prayed for me. Jereen's mother prays for us, and that's a beautiful thing. I know that my wife, Jereen, sometimes in the night gets up and she's praying for our own children. And uh, it's, a, it's a very, very beautiful thing. And by the way, one of the, the, the greatest things that you can do to honor your mother on this Mother's Day is to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can assure you, if your mother's a strong believer in the Lord, that is her number one prayer. It goes beyond that prayer is more important than you having a great job, your marriage, your kids, your family, your car, your safety. The most important thing in a person's life is that they find Jesus Christ as their Savior. And there's power in a mom's prayer. I want to end this message by giving you a true story. It's such a powerful story. I'm going to take a little time on it to really tell it well. But it's a real story. It was documented uh, that in 1829, there was a man by the name of Peter, okay? And he has the strangest survival story ever told. So our story begins on an October morning when a schooner by the name of Mermaid set sail from Sydney, Australia, at, for Collier Bay. And the ship was carrying a crew of 18 and three passengers. And on the fourth day, the wind died down and the vessel was in very quiet waters. But the captain saw the barometer falling and, and soon a wall of back, black, black clouds was approaching very rapidly. And the, and the storm struck Shortly before midnight, huge waves broke over the deck and, and, and rain and howling winds, you know, were just ripping through the rigging and, and the ship was driven towards this ridge of rocks and very desperately the captain and the crew were trying to get the ship to, you know, to, to not have this disaster. But in spite of all of their frantic e efforts, the mermaid just smashed into this coral reef and that ripped the bottom off of the vessel. Abandoned ship, the captain shouted above the screams of, of the wind and the seamen and the passengers dropped over the side and they started swimming towards a large rock about 200 feet away. The captain was the last man to leave the sinking ship and when he arrived at the rock, he found all 21 persons had made it to safety. And so for three miserable days, the survivors huddled on that rock, and then another boat came along. It was called the Swiftsure, and they took these passengers on board. And, and that, that ship continued off of her, on her course, and, and on the fifth day after the rescue, she also was caught in a powerful, uncharted current, and, and she swept broadside into rocks along the shore. And, and, and then the Swiftsure, that bark also began to break up, and the second order was given to abandon ship. And... Uh, and uh, But amazingly, everyone was saved. And then later that day, another ship called the Governor Ready with a crew of 32 appeared. And, and uh, they took on these, the maroon crews of these other two vessels and all the passengers. And of course, man, things were getting a little bit crowded by then. But, and so they sailed away trying to do their best to do what was right. But amazingly, and I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Amazingly, three hours later... The ship caught fire and the 
flames roared through that wooden vessel like a gale, and all aboard had to climb onto the safety boats and cling to things to try to find safety. And, and so that's the third ship now that had gone down, and, and they, were, they were many miles from the shipping lanes, but, uh, but an Australian government ship called the Comet came along, blown off course by a storm. And the crew of the Comet wasn't real happy about taking all the passengers of these now three vessels on board, not just because things were kind of crowded there, but because they kind of felt like, man, you know, there must be some kind of a jinx on these people. And, uh, and they kind of expected trouble. And guess what? You're not going to believe this. But it came five days later in the form of a violent storm that snapped off the comet's mast and ripped away her sails and carried away her rudder. And when she began sinking, the crew took the only lifeboat, left all the rest clinging to the wreckage, and the fourth ship went down and uh, for 18 hours, those people had to drift in the cold sea, fighting the dark, fighting the sharks. And along came, finally, one more ship, the Jupiter. And they were rescued. And for a fourth time, amazingly, not even one single life was lost. But you're not going to believe this, okay? I, I, I'm not making this up. It's historically documented, okay? Two days later, the Jupiter hit a reef and sank, and the fifth ship went down. And the passengers, there was a passenger vessel called the City of Leeds that was close at hand to take all on board and to travel and transfer them safely on to Sydney. So amazingly, five ships have been lost and the crew of the mermaid had been shipwrecked five times and yet no one was lost. That's an amazing story. But now for the most amazing part of our story. On the passenger ship, the city of Leeds, there was an elderly English woman by the name of Sarah Richley. And she was critically ill. She had earlier told all the passengers that she was going to Australia in hopes of finding her son who had run away 15 years before and joined the Navy. And she had never heard from him. And the Navy officials had told her that he had served his term and then left. And, and she was so sick. She was delirious from this high fever. And she constantly called out the name of her son. And, and in between that, you could at times hear her pleading with God, asking God uh, that he would grant her to be able to see her son just one more time. And so, and so it looked like that, you know, the, the time of her passing was, 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 was drawing close. And so the doctor decided to ease her dying moments by finding someone to pretend that he was her son. And he looked around for a young man and he found this man by the name of Peter. And, and he said, would he explain what was going on? He said, would you please do me this incredible favor of going in there and pretending like you're this woman's son just to comfort her? And so he said, sure, I'll do that. And so they went down into the hold of the ship, down towards the room. And just before they got through the door, he turned, the doctor turned to Peter. And he said, I want you to understand about this woman. Her name is Sarah richly and she's from Yorkshire and, and, and he couldn't believe it that the young man just turned Peter just turned completely white and he braced himself against the wall and the doctor said what's wrong with you and and suddenly the man tears were pouring down this man's cheeks and he said you don't understand Sarah richly is my mother you see I am Peter richly please take me to my mother what a joyous reunion that must have been as, as Peter went in and sat down on the bedside beside his mother and she understood that God had answered her prayers and she was able to see her son once again. And so don't tell me that God does hear the prayer of a mother. God hears every prayer that we pray, that we pray. And I believe that the prayers of mothers, amen, they have a powerful effect in our world today. 
let me tell you the rest of the story. Happiness is great medication. Sarah richly recovered from whatever was troubling her, and she wound up living in a house that her son built for her for nearly 20 years before she passed away. I'm just here to tell any mom and encourage any mother who's been praying, who's been calling out to God, and you've been praying for your family members, you've been praying for certain things. Listen, my friend, don't you give up. If God can spare a man from five shipwrecks and work it out where he can bring uh, that man on board the very ship that you're traveling in, I'm just here to tell you, my friend, that we serve a God that does the impossible. And he is hearing your prayers, and that God is not a respecter of persons in our life today. Let me pray with you today. Let me first say that if you are listening to this message on this Mother's Day and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want to encourage you today to ask Christ into your life, to completely surrender your life to the Lord. It's the most important decision that any person can make. And we believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ and that gospel tells us that all of us are sinners. Every one of us has fallen short, including myself. I have not met the mark. I've fallen short of what I should have been. The truth is that I needed a Savior, but God in His grace and God in His love and God in His mercy reached on His hand for me and forgave me of my sins as I trusted in what he did on the cross of Calvary. Jesus Christ died for you. He took your place on the cross. He took your punishment for your sin. And because of that, he can now offer you a free gift of eternal life and his righteousness that will cover you. Listen, if you need Jesus, would you just pray this prayer with me today? Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I need you. Would you please come into my life I want to accept Jesus Christ today as my Lord and my Savior. I knew, know that I need forgiveness. I know that I need someone to help direct my life. I've went astray. I've went off path. I've failed. And today I think of the prayers of my mother. I think of the prayers of my grandmother. And so today I want to commit my life back to Jesus Christ. I want to trust in Him and so, Lord, I ask that you would forgive me of my sins. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Make, it, make me completely yours today by the shed blood of Jesus. I, with my mouth, I confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. And in my heart, I believe that he was raised from the dead on that glorious Easter Sunday. And so, Lord, today I believe and trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. And I want to pray for every mom today. Heavenly Father, I pray for all of our moms today, those wonderful, loving, kind, good, giving moms of Fountain of Life. And I pray your blessing upon them today. I pray that this day they would feel loved. I pray that this day they would feel appreciated. I pray that this day that you would give them love and concern and care for them and I pray that you would wrap your mighty arms around them today. God, and embrace them to your own heart today because you love them all. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen and amen. Listen, we want to thank you for listening today. Amen. We'll be back very soon. In two weeks, we'll be back here at Fountain of Life. And we just want to encourage you today, stay faithful, stay safe, stay in the Word. And most of all today, give mom a call. She deserves it. Amen? Amen. We love and appreciate each and every one of you. God bless you.